Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the official first week of the summer term at the King's House School, Windsor. I want to spend some time congratulating you all because not only have I received lots of PACE test results, but I also know from your teachers that many of you have been working really hard doing extra work over the Easter holiday. So I wanted to congratulate you personally and say, well done. We're really proud of you for all your hard work, for the perseverance and dedication that you've shown over the holidays. And I also wanted to let you know that these sort of um, positive character traits and godly character traits and good choices, we are going to be giving house points for those over this term. So we're going to ask your mums and dads to email the teachers whenever they see in you some great character trait or some good choice that you make at home. We want them to let us know so that we can add those to your merits and to your house points so you can gain house points for your houses over the next term. And um, we will be keeping those score of those. And at the end of term, we will then be able to add them all together and to be able to let you know who, which house has won the house cup for all of the work that you've done over this year. All right, well, without further ado, I'm going to give some congratulations to those of you who have done PACE tests over the holidays and over the last couple of days already because you've been working so hard. So let's see. First of all, we'll do the Upper Junior Learning Centre. So for the Upper Junior Learn Learning Centre, I want to say well done to Joshua, who got a very good score in his maths, his English and his word building, and who got 100% in his social studies place. Well done, Joshua. To Keon, you have 100% in maths and a good score in social studies. Well done. To Caleb, you've got a very good score in maths, in English, in social studies and in science. Well done, Caleb. To Joshua, you've got a very good score in maths and English. Well done. To Reuben, well done to you. You've got a good score in maths and social studies. To Harry, you've got a great score in your English. Well done. To Isaac, wow, look at this, a great score in maths, in English, in social studies, in science and 100% in literature and word building. Well done, that's a great job. To Jeshurun, well done, you've got a great score in literature, in social studies and in word building. Um, to Joel, well done you, great. You've done maths, English, literature and word building, all great scores and 100% in social studies and science. So well done to you as well, great job. Um, and lastly, with the um, uppers for Levi, well done, you've got a great score in your word building. And now on to the lowers. Let's see. Lowers, David, you've got a great score in maths, English, literature, social studies, and the extra Bible pace that you're doing. Well done. Elora, you've got a great score in your maths and your word building. Well done. Gabriella, great score in your literature and 100% in your English pace. Well done. Nathaniel, you've got a great score in maths and 100% in literature and word building, well done. Arthur, you've got a great score in English and then 100%, wow, in literature, science and word building, well done you. To Garrett, you've got 100%, wow, in maths, English and social studies and science, well done. To Grace. You've got a great score in your maths, your English, your social studies and your science. Well done. And lastly but not leastly, Ilya. You've got a great score in maths, in English, in social studies and in science. And it looks like you've done two paces in three of those subjects over the holidays and in the last couple of days. So well done to you. All right, moving quickly on. Oh no, we have one more, I think. We also have one for Johan. Well done, Johan. You got 100% in maths, social studies and science. Well done, Johan. And now on to the Middle Junior Learning Centre. Daniel, you got a very good score in English, in word building, in literature and 100% in science. Well done. Dana Lynn, you've got 100% in word building and a very good score in your English. Caleb, you've got a very good score in maths, in English, in literature, in science, and 100% in social studies. Well done. Alexander, a very good score in your literature pace. Ruby, 100% in literature and science. 
and Marku, very good scores in both literature and maths. Well done to all of you. We are very proud of you. On Sunday, you may have watched the King's Church International live video cast with Pastors Wes and Adriana Richards talk about God's amazing grace. Before I talk to you a bit about their message, I want you to do one thing. I want you to pause the video and I want you to go run and ask your mums and dads if you can borrow their U Bible app. And I want you to look up Ephesians 2 verses 3 to 10. And I want you to do it in the International Children's Bible version. So ask your mums and dads to help you. Pause the video and go find it quick. All right, have you found the Bible passage? Because in a minute we're going to read it together. But before we do that, I want to ask you, do you know what grace means? Can anyone tell me what grace means? Well, I'm sure you've given some really good answers. I wanted to tell you in one sentence what I think grace means. Grace means God's love, acceptance and blessing that we don't deserve. That's what grace means to me. And you know, in Romans 5 verse 8, the Bible says, but Christ Jesus died for us while we were sinners. In this way, God shows his great love for us. And I heard a story once that I think shows really well what it means, what God's grace means and what Jesus did for us. It's a story about two boys who were the best of friends at school. These boys grew up together and over time they lost touch with each other and they went their separate ways. One of the boys went on to do great things and he did great exams and he worked really hard and he ended up becoming a judge. The other boy had a tough time growing up and he ended up getting himself into trouble and doing some bad things. And it ended up with him one day being in court. And he had to go into court because he was going to be in a lot of trouble for some of the things that he'd done wrong. And when he got into court, he realised, oh my goodness, the judge is my old friend from school. He couldn't believe it. And the judge suddenly realised as well, oh, this man in the dock that's done something wrong. He's my old friend from school. And it was a really tough thing for the judge because he knew about all the things that this man had done. And he knew that there was gonna have to be a punishment for all those things that he'd done wrong. But the judge really loved this man. He'd been his best friend for many years and he wasn't sure what to do. Anyway, the court case carried on and it turned out that the judge had no choice but to charge the man and charge him a huge fine, let's say 150,000 pounds. It's a huge sum of money for all the things that he'd done wrong. He had to pay this fee. And he knew that the man couldn't afford it. And it, at that moment, the judge had to say, I order you by the court of law to pay 150,000 pounds. And the man who was in trouble put his head in his hand and he said, I don't know what I'm going to do. I can't pay the fine. But then when the judge had given his sentence and the court was what we call adjourned, it was finished. The judge came down from his high place. He took off his wig. Do you remember you saw the wig and the robe that judges wear when um, Mr. Mockett came to speak to us? He took off his robes, he took off his wig, and he went to the man and he gave him 150,000 pounds to pay the fine because he knew that his friend would not have enough money to pay it. But he said, I want to help you because you're my friend and I love you and I want to show you mercy and I want to show you grace. And he paid the man's fine for him. And that's just like what Jesus did for us and what Father God gave to us when he gave his son Jesus on the cross to pay for all of our mistakes. Jesus took the punishment on him so that we could be free. 
That's God's grace. Okay, now that we understand what grace is, I want to quickly share the three points that our senior pastors shared with us on Sunday. And I want you to help me find the points in your Bible as we read the passage together. It was Ephesians 2, verse 3 to 10. So Pastor Adriana's three points were, number one, that God's amazing grace means that we have been given the great gift of God's love. We have been given the great gift of God's love. Point two was that God's amazing grace means that we can feel and know the, a great change in our lives. And number three was that God's amazing grace means that you and I can have great purpose in our lives. Okay, we're going to read the passage together now in Ephesians 2 verses 3b to 10. And I want you to shout out when you hear the words from these three points. So when you hear God's great love, when you hear about a change in your life, or when you hear about God's great purpose for your life from the passage, I want you to shout out when you hear it. All right, so we're going to read now Ephesians 2 together. We should have suffered God's anger because we were sinful by nature. We were the same as all other people. But God's mercy is great and he loved us very much. We were spiritually dead because of the things we did wrong against God. But God gave us new life with Christ. You have been saved by God's grace and he raised us up with Christ and gave us a seat with him in the heavens. He did this for those of us who are in Christ Jesus. He did this so that for all future time he could show the very great riches of his grace. He shows that grace by being kind to us in Christ Jesus. I mean that you have been saved by grace because you believe. You did not save yourselves, it was a gift from God. You cannot brag that you're saved by the work you've done. God has made us what we are. In Christ Jesus, God made us new people so that we would do good works. God had planned in advance those good works for us. He had planned for us to live our lives doing them. That's Ephesians 2, verse 3b to verse 10. Okay, did you find the phrases where you can find what Pastor Adriana's points were? I'm sure you did. The first point being God's love that he gives us is in verses 4 and verses, verse 7. And it says there, you might have heard, and I put my finger to my ear so you could tell that was where it was. It said, he loves us very much. And it also says that he was kind, and he is kind in Christ Jesus. The second point about feeling and knowing a great change is found in verse 5 and verse 6. And it explains that we go from an old life to a new life. And that we get the promise of heaven. And that is a new life after this one. Great news. And point number three, which was having purpose, that can be found in verse 10. Verse 10 explains that we are meant to do good works and to do great things with our lives. How many points did you find? Well done. I'd like to pray for you now before we close the assembly for today. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time that we've had together where we've been able to read your word and understand a bit more about your grace. Lord Jesus, I pray you would help every child and every family member to understand your grace and how great that love is that you've given us. Lord, I pray that you would help each of us to understand 
that you want to fulfil your great purpose in our lives, that you want to use us to do great things for you, Lord, and that you want to pour out your love on each one of us. Lord, I thank you that each one of us are gonna understand that you want to change our lives for the better, that you want to give us a great life. Lord, I pray your blessing on every family, on every child. I pray, Lord, for your protection over them. I pray for great health for them. And I pray, Lord Jesus, above all things, that your love will be evident in each one of us. Lord, as we come close to you every day, Holy Spirit, please fill us and help us to show your grace to one another this week. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, now that we've talked a bit about amazing grace and we've shared a bit of the Word of God, I think it's a great opportunity now for you to go and do some singing and praising to the Lord. And there's a perfect song today that we have used in our assemblies at the King's House School Windsor called This Is Amazing Grace by Bethel Kids. The link is below on the screen. So if you want to ask your mums and dads to find that video on YouTube and you can praise and worship together. It's been really wonderful sharing the word of God with you and praying for you today. Have a great day. God bless.